meeting is being recorded. All right, what's up, familia? Welcome inside the hotel room. Hope you guys are doing good. Keep in between the lines. Got your load secure. I got one, Mr. Vic Med, the man with the trucking clutch. What's going on, Vic? Uh, same old, same old. Just uh, working, working. Yeah, man. If you guys haven't, uh, to all my troqueros, I keep saying, you guys haven't uh, checked out one, Mr. Vic Med, check him out. Uh, the link to his channel is in the comment section is pinned so you don't have to go looking for it it's the number it's the first uh comment you'll see just hit that link and uh he does q and a's every now and then man when i'm assuming whenever he's feeling up to whenever he's in the mood <laughs> he jumps on and does a little q and a man but um you know a couple uh i get asked uh, a few questions and i i don't, I don't I never say, hey, man, I, I, I know everything there is to know about trucking because I don't. Um, but one of the questions I, I do get asked is, how do you become an owner operator? And I started as an owner operator, but I had a lot of help with the familia. My family's in the business. So <clears throat> and that was many years ago. Um, so, you know, it, it was a. Uh, I was blessed, you know, I was blessed, man. I, I couldn't, I, I didn't have to do all that on my own. But if there right. is somebody that wants to become an owner operator, they're like, you know what? I've had my class saved for X amount of years. And I want to, I want to, this is it, man. I'm, I'm tired of the company or, or may not tired of it, but Hey man, I just kind of want to move on and, and do my own thing. Now I brought on, I brought in one Mr. Vic Mad. So we can go ahead and get into details because you go ask somebody else from what I've been told, hey, how do you become an owner operator? Their answer is like, well, oh, just um, find a truck that you like and buy it and um, just get it rolling. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I right, man, now I know exactly what to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's not uh, that's much that's not much of a help. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, we'll start from the very, very beginning. First of all, money wise, Vic, I've heard you say something that I've never heard anybody else say before, but I think it rings so true in this country. It's not about money; it's about credit, right? When you think about buying your own truck, I'm, that's that's what it's about. I mean, everything in this country is about credit. And then it's about money. But the first thing they hit you with, let's run your credit. Anything that you do in this country, let's run your credit. So get it right. It's not about money. It's about you getting your credit up to par. If that credit is not up to par, you're going to come out of pocket with a lot of money, which you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. So recommendation before you think about purchasing your own truck, work on that credit, you know? Yep, yep. That's okay. the best thing to do because, I mean, as a business owner, you don't want to come out of your pocket with your own money. You want to use with somebody else's money. Okay, okay. So I got good credit now. I've worked on my credit. My credit's good. Vic. I want to buy my own truck. I want to go work for myself, man. What's the first steps that I should do? Homes? You should open up an LLC or a corporation before you even buy a, before you even buy a truck. Okay. If, if you want more, buck, more, more money for your buck, you want to go with some kind of corporation, either a small corporation or a corporation. If, you know, you just, whatever, go get an LLC. And what, what is a corporation and LLC? It's a company. It's a company. Uh, you can open this up with anybody that sells, that does permits for truckers, that does registration for trucks. You can go to any shop that does this. If they do this, in that same office, they're going to be able to create an LLC for you or uh, uh, some kind of corporation, depending on what it is that you want. 
Okay, do you go online? What do you do? What do you type in to, to go uh, look at this stuff? Uh, do, do a corporation, do an LLC. That's all you have to do is look that up. Okay. And you, and you put your city in your state and there, there should be a whole bunch of them that should come up. Okay. And this is for what now? What, what does this do? You're saying do this, this before for, you buy a truck. What, what is this for? This is for your company. You're going to have a company now. Mm -hmm. So you come up with the name, say, uh, Cholo Trucker Incorporated, Cholo Trucker LLC. So now you have a righteous name for your company. And this is what you're going to put on the side of your truck or trucks. Yeah, I don't think uh, people actually register that. When you buy your own truck, you are now a business owner. It's a business on yeah. wheels, but I, I want everybody to understand that. When you buy your own truck, you own your own business. You are now a business owner. So, okay, right. you go there. How, like, how much is this going to cost, Vic? Ballpark. It's going to cost you, it's going to cost you roughly 3200 Okay, 3200 Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is before you, this is before you uh, pull the trigger on getting yourself a truck. Okay. Yes. All right. So once you establish that, what, what's the next move one should do? You want to wait, you want to wait a couple months uh, before you go shopping for your truck. Okay. Because this is what happens when it's called a new venture. When you first open up your company, it's considered a new venture. Not too many people, not too many brokers, not too many companies are, are going to want to give you freight because you are new. Some companies, some brokers ask for your company to be up and at them, you know, three months, six months to a year. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Who's got that little piece of it and then you take it to the yard, right? And then he goes that, and, and, and then he goes and does that Schneider. Okay. That one make sure he brings back a, a an empty trigger. Okay. Sorry about that, bro. I'm still working. <laughs> no, that's 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 business right there, man. That's what yeah. I love about it. So, okay, so, so you do that and you wait. You do not go and get your truck. You, you got to wait just to show that you've been around for a little bit. Yeah, so so what you want to do is, is wait a couple months, then go shopping for your truck. I mean, you can go shop for your truck as soon as you get your approval for, you know, your corporation or your LLC. You can do that, you know, but okay. that's, that's what they play. The companies and the brokers, you know, they want to see some kind of history that you have with your company to be trustworthy, to give you freight. Mm. So after you do that, I mean, you wait a couple months, you go get your truck. And then, uh, well, before you go get your truck, well, you go get your truck and then you're going to have to go get some insurance on that truck. That right. is going to cost you, that's going to cost you about, I say, maybe 4,000. From four to forty five hundred, because they're gonna want that down payment, and then uh, so that covers first month and last month, mm -hmm. and uh, a monthly basis uh, uh, insurance payment is probably gonna be kind of high from from fifteen to seventeen to eighteen a month, okay. because you're a new venture again. Everything that you start with is gonna be pretty high okay let's let's rewind real quick on buying a truck mm -hmm. um what's the best way to go about buying a truck uh what are you looking for uh do you want to buy from a dealership do you want to buy from somebody who's selling theirs what's the best way to look at a truck um, I heard you on, on, uh, on one of your Q&As, make sure you have a mechanic come and look at it after you test drive it. So I mean, you can buy from, 
Yeah, you can buy it from anybody. I mean, you can buy it off the streets. You can go to the dealer. The main thing is drive it. Let the coach generate on the computer if there's any. Bring it back, park it, and have a mechanic with you that has a computer. Have that computer plug into the truck and see what's wrong with the truck. So is it really necessary to go to the dealer? No. Can you buy it off the streets? Yeah. Just make sure it's a good truck. Your, your biggest investment buying a truck is going to be taking that mechanic that has a computer that can hook onto the truck. That's going to be your biggest investment. And around what's a ballpark figure that a mechanic will go and check out the truck uh, before you purchase it? No more than 300 bucks. Okay. Okay. But it's, it, I mean, you got to do that, right? I mean, if it's an investment, you, you're buying yourself your, your business. So, okay. And also, uh, Familia, make sure you buy a truck. You know, whatever you're thinking about getting into, and, and hauling, uh, make sure you buy the proper truck. You know, um, when I first started getting, when I first got in a truck and I was hauling bottom dumps, it wouldn't have suited me right to buy a three stroke truck uh, with three axles. I just, I needed a two stroke, I didn't need a sleeper in it. So, you know, think of the job that, what you're gonna be doing and buy the proper truck for that. So, um, so if you could be, you know, if you could be doing bottom dumps, don't, don't go getting yourself a sleeper with, with three axles. It's not, you don't need that. You're going to end up ruining your truck like that. So, all right. So once you buy your truck, Rick, uh, the insurance, then you go get the insurance. Yes. Yep. And all that. You get your insurance and you go and you'll get the permits. All this you're gonna you can get it from the same place. Whoever's doing the LLCs is also doing insurance, is also doing permits. If they're not, they're gonna send you to an associate of theirs. So everything is in one. So you don't have to shop around for a whole different facilities or phone numbers or stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So just go with whoever they recommend if they don't do it themselves. Yeah. But nine out of 10, everything's in one. Okay. Okay. And from that, when you're talking about permits, so we're talking about insurance. When you're talking about permits, what are we talking about? What permits are we talking about here? Well, you got your, you got your if does, uh, you got your CAs, you got your DOTs. You know, it, it just depends where you're going to run. Like, for instance, us, we run nothing but Southern California. We stay in Southern California. That's it. That's all. So all we need is a CA number and a DOT number, which that costs us. Uh, Jesus, I forgot. No, no more than 200 bucks a year. Now, if, if you're going to go out of state, you know, you're going to do some regional work, then that's going to cost you a little bit more. But it brings down the price on the California permits. So we pay yearly. If you get your IFTA to go out of state, you don't have to pay the permits for California. Yeah, and uh, IFTA stands for uh, International Fuel Tax Association. Um, if you run just in the state that you're in, you don't need it. If you're gonna run out of the state, you're gonna need to get in contact with them and uh, do that. Um, does it, it is it worth it, Vic, to uh, to go out of state? Um, you're saying you got to pay the IFTA now, but they lower the CA. Is it is it worth it? Does it balance out? Well, th that part of the job to me really doesn't matter. Okay. What I try to look at is wear and tear on the truck, how much fuel you're spending, and how much time my drivers are in the truck. That's what I look at. Okay, so let's just say, for instance, you've ran a load from LA over to Vegas and say that load is paying, you know, 1500 bucks, right? So I'm calculating the miles, the wear and tear that you're putting on the truck and how much fuel you are spending to go to Vegas and come back. Now, 
1500 so can i get my guys 1500 doing local work from alley to san Bernardino, going back and forth can i get him get them three loads that pay 500 bucks a piece in one day i'm pretty sure i can so why would i run them to vegas do you see what i'm trying to say yeah does that make sense yes yes even if i have to even if i have to get three loads that only pay 400 bucks and they've made 1200 bucks a day mm. would i still run up to vegas for an extra 300 bucks how fast am i going to be able to get these guys to do these three loads locally then for them to go to vegas and back can i make it happen before that one guy from vegas comes back that's, that's the kind of stuff that I look at. As far as cost for the permits and all that stuff, that to me, it's it's irrelevant because I've been doing the local stuff so long that, uh, you know, then permits really don't matter to me. Not at right. this point. Right. Okay, so with all that, with, you know, your CA number and all that, how, how, how much like ballpark is that gonna run? The C and the DLT? Yeah. 200 bucks a year. Okay. A year, not monthly, a year. Once a year, right. you have to pay that. Right, right. All right, so now you got that down. When does the... Does that include the tags for, uh, for the license plate, the registration and all? No, no, the registrations, they, I think they're at uh, 2,800 right now, yearly. Well, but you can go to the DMV and do a monthly. You can do three months. You can do six months. You don't have to pay off the whole year, you know, but you end up paying more when you do a monthly thing or every three months or every six months, you know. So I prefer just to pay it yearly and get it over with, you know. And if you can, I highly recommend it. When I was an owner operator, I did it monthly. Just so I could think that I was just kind of saving all money. And my family was doing it that way too. So that was kind of the way that I was just brought to do it. And I got to tell you, the, uh, a month goes by fast. A month goes by fast. And uh, maybe it's different today. Maybe there's other ways to do it. But back then, you had to go to the DMV, wait in line and all that, and, and doing that every month, it seemed like it just came by quick. And it's like, damn it, man. And, uh, you know, there was times that I ran with no tags, but uh, that was many years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, all right, to, to, register, uh, to register your truck, Vic, um, so it's not there, they're not doing it all. Um, so you wanna go register your truck now, you just take it, you just uh, take the paperwork out to the DMV and uh, and pay the fee and they'll they'll go ahead and register it the way you want, right? Month, three months, yearly. Yeah, but, but you before you do that, you have to pay your road taxes because you can't go to the DMV without paying your road taxes. That is another thing that you have to do on a yearly basis. Okay. So okay. without your road taxes, you won't get your registration. And where, where can you do that? Online, online, road taxes, you can do online. You can just type in uh, uh, pay road taxes in California mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of websites come up. Most of them are, are trustworthy, you know. Uh, you pay it and within a minute or two, you'll get a receipt through the email and you get your, uh, your road taxes uh, copy. Okay. Man, Vic. If somebody's looking to buy a truck, what are they looking for in a truck? How many miles? What what what's a reasonable price for for the amount of miles and the year and all that? Well, we do local, and like you said earlier, you know, you got to look at the truck for yourself. You know what kind of work that you do. You know, mm -hmm. we do local stuff. When I go look at a truck, I'm looking at a truck that has four hundred thousand or less. Okay. Uh, right now in California, everybody needs to start looking at a truck from 2015 on up. Everything under 2015 on down 
is uh, pretty much on the list to get booted out of California. So don't get caught up with that. You know, I'm going to buy a 2013 and, you know, I'm cool because you're not because they're going to boot that, that truck out of California. They want everybody to have upgraded uh, systems in their trucks. So get a 2015 on up. A reasonable, reasonable price for a 2015 is, you know, uh, 47 to 50,000. Okay. Now, if, if you're going out of state and you're doing reefer work or you're doing heavy hauling, get yourself a heavy duty engine, like a Cummins, uh, like a Packard. Uh, don't go get you a soft engine like a freaking Detroit Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> don't go get you then. If you're gonna if you're gonna go towards Volvo, get you a Mac. You know, a Mac is more heavy duty than the DD13 that's on the on the Volvos. You know, just think about what kind of work that you're gonna do. You want to save fuel? Go get you a Volvo. You know, uh, go get you a Freightliner. Uh, don't get you a Cummins because a Cummins, it's a powerful engine. It sucks up fuel like madness. Um, but yeah, that's that's what you want to do. You want to look at what it is that you're going to do and you want to fit that engine and that truck to whatever it is that you're going to do. You can't just, uh, I'm going to go get a Peterbilt and uh, you know I'm going to go do dry vans, you know, and I'm going to go do them local. That, that just, it, it doesn't make sense. Peter Bills have no turn. You're gonna be there forever trying to freaking twist that trailer into that dock. Most of them have pack card and Cummins engines. They suck up too much gas. Why would you want that kind of truck or engine doing local work? Makes no sense. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, uh, Peter Bills is my favorite model. Uh, you know, with the long conventional nose, three seventy nine or three eighty nine. I'm like, man, just beautiful machines, man. But if you're gonna be city driving, uh, that's not the truck for you. That's not the that's not the one to be having. If you're gonna be, you know, going for long miles on the open roads and stuff like that, all that, man, handle your business. But if you're gonna be in the cities and tight turns all you know all day and everything, that you're you're, you're buying yourself a headache, man. You're buying yourself. Yeah. You're putting an extra obstacle in front of you. Um. So uh. So yeah, definitely. Um. Make sure the truck is for the job that uh, that you're going to be doing. Hey, Vic, um, what do you think if somebody's looking for local work, pretty much like what you do and everything, uh, should they buy uh, just a day cab? Again, it just depends on, you know, it, it depends on the person, you know. Um, I don't have no day cabs just for the simple fact is if they're going to go do a delivery and they're going to sit there two, three hours, four hours, you know, me, myself, I wouldn't want to be sitting up on that freaking day cab, you know, or laying down a board across both seas just to lay down, you know. <laughs> I don't buy day cabs because I was a driver myself, you know. So what I have now is mid-rows. Mid-rows are just one bunk. And, you know, they can kick back and relax, you know, and the truck is not big and it's not small, you know. It's, it's, it's pretty good. I have a guy right now, he's about maybe 5'10", 5'11", and he stands up on that little truck like nothing, you know. It doesn't, he doesn't bump his head or nothing, you know. So that's that's my take. But it just all depends on the person, you know. If he's cool with the, with the day cab, then go for it, you know. Day cabs just seem to last longer doing local work. That is for sure. Okay. Okay. All right, Vic. So now we got the insurance. You got your truck. You got all the permits. You got your tags, all that. Let's start making some money. Let's start working. What do I do? Where do I go? What, I mean, work just doesn't pop up and out of nowhere. Where does one go now to find work, to make some ferry on? Well, you know, there's not too many people that can do this, but there is people that do this. The first thing you want to do is you want to sign up with the load board. You can sign up with DAT load board or you can sign up with truck stop. You're going to have a lot of misses because why you are considered a new venture. Your company hasn't been open long enough for them to consider you a trustworthy 
company to haul their freight. But there is companies out there that will take you, that will take a new venture on. Like for instance, Amazon will take some some uh, some new guys, CH Robinson. There's you just gotta hunt. Now, the easiest way to do this, like I said, you need six months to lapse away so you can start getting the majority of these brokers to mess with you. The easiest way to go about it is go hook up with the company. If you are already working with the company, you just walk in there and say, look, I have my own authority. Can I get freight from you guys? Do that for six months. After the six months is over, you can mess with everybody and their mamas. Okay. Well, let's say they work with a company that doesn't get OO drivers. Um, what do you recommend? Look for another company. Okay. But, you know, like I said, if you are that guy that's willing to go on the load board and go through the headaches of calling a whole bunch of brokers because you are a new venture, so it's going to take a while to find that one broker that will mess with you. If you're willing to do that, then do that. Get on some load boards. Get on a uh, buy into DAT and truck stop. One, two, three load board is free on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, get on them. And when you see a load you like, click on it. Get the information of the broker. Call the broker and see if they'll mess with you. See if they'll trust you to haul their freight. How hard is it to uh, to start finding some freight for somebody that just got into the business? Somebody that they like I said they've been driving for a while, but now they have their own authority. Now they got their own truck. How hard is it to to uh, first find work? Well, I mean it's it's gonna be hard if if you're doing it all by yourself. But if you have somebody doing it with you, it's gonna be a little easy. Because, you know, you, you just got to find that broker, you know, you just, there's a whole bunch of brokers on DAT load board. You see a load you like, you click on it, get the info, call the broker. If they're not willing to trust you, you got to call the next broker, the next broker, the, until you find that broker. Is it easy? No, it's not going to be easy. But once you get that six months under your belt that your authority has been open, a whole bunch of doors will open and a whole bunch of people will want to mess with you because your authority has been open for six months. Okay. Okay. If we rewind all the way to the beginning yeah. where it, what, you were talking about the corporation and LLC, right? Okay. Yeah. Is that a one-time fee or is that something that you pay monthly? No. After that, it's $800 a year. Okay. Okay, so you could pay that and then you could lay back for a few months without having to pay them again, correct? No, 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 no. To open up your corporation is going to be about 30, 30 something hundred. Right. After that, after that, that's it. Okay. But after that, once a year, you have to pay $800 to Uncle Sam to keep your corporation open. Got you. So that's what I'm saying. So once you pay for the corporation or the LLC, that's just a one-time payment. And you could just, that's why you're saying just relax for a few months. So that name stays there for a few months. Yeah. 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 Okay. Don't, don't go buy your truck. Just, uh, you know, because it, it's going to be another process for you to buy the truck and then get it insured. So I'm hoping maybe it'll take another month to do all that process. And then you don't have to wait, you know, the whole six months to start messing with all these brokers and companies because you already have six months under your belt that your corporation has been open, you know? Okay. So when you, when you get the corporation, what do you recommend? Five months, six months, kind of just look around at trucks here and there. I, I say four months, give it four months because it's going to take, take you about maybe a month to find the right truck. Hopefully it takes you less, but if it does take you a month, then now you have five months under your belt. Gotcha. So now you just have to wait 30 more days for you to have the six months. Once you have the six months, you're, you're in like Flynn. Okay. Okay. Got you. So once six months happens, then brokers feel a little bit more like, all right, cool. You know what? You've been around the block for a minute or two, man. Yeah. We got a couple of loads here, a couple of loads there. Okay, 
All right. Uh, I see some uh, some owner operators that are kind of dedicated to some uh, major carriers, man. I mean, how likely is that that you just get work from one carrier and that's it? You know, you know that's that's a that's a roll of the dice. You know, we've been in business for quite a while, and uh, just last year we ended up picking up a dedicated account with Red Away. I don't know if you know about Red, Red Away. I know Red right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now we have a dedicated account. So it's it's just, it's a roll of the dice because here in Southern California, it's just, uh, it's a lot of cutthroating, you know? Mm. Uh, I can bet on a contract and, you know, somebody else can come in and, you know, bid on it, you know, 20 bucks cheaper. And of course, you know, all the corporations are going to go with that $20 cheaper, you know? So right. it's, it's hard. It's hard in Southern California, bro. But can you get a direct shipper? Yeah. Yeah. You can find one. You just, you got to grind. You got to grind. You got to make phone calls. You got to stay on the web. You just got to grind for it. So as an owner operator, you just continually trying to find different loads all the time. Yeah. Okay. I got a I got a good buddy of mine. He's down in Gardena, and uh, he opened up his authority like maybe in April of last year, and in July he already he had a, a direct shipper already. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and and look at me. You know we we've been we've been around the block for a little bit, and we just got a direct shipper. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a roll of the dice, bro. It's, it's a roll of the dice, but are they out there? Are the contracts out there? Yeah, yeah. You just, like I said, you got to stay on that phone. And uh, all right, I think you, uh, you cut out there for like five seconds. So you just got to work. Uh, I mean, you got to search the web and you just got to stay on the phone, but you will get that contract. Okay. All right. How does one know, Vic? How does one know that the load is worth the fatty? Do you just talk to other drivers and see what they're getting paid? How, how does one know that you know the company's not looking at them and saying like, ah, this guy's still wet behind the ears, man. I could cut a hundred bucks from this local man see dat dat and and truck stop them two load boards are real good for stuff like that because you can find a load say for instance from uh marino valley going down to compton right mm -hmm. you can click on that load and it'll tell you what it's paid within the last 20 days so you can just go based off of them rates bro got it okay Okay. The DAT load board and trucks up. I mean, they have all the tools. They're they're good load boards to mess with. How often does a owner operator get paid? Um, it 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 just depends. Um, you have different methods of getting paid. You got quick pay, and then you got factory. Uh, you can sign up with a factoring company where you're going to get paid within 24 hours. All you do is oh, get wow. your bills signed. Yeah, you get your bills signed. You take a picture of all your bills and you wow. send them over to the factoring company. Or, and then the factoring company is going to take 2 to 3% of what the load pays. So you'll get that money direct deposit into your account, but they're going to take that 2 or 3% out of that uh, load. Because now they're buying the bill. That's their bill now. Okay. Right. Now you have quick pay. Quick pay, you have a lot of companies, a lot of brokers offer it. Quick pay is, you know, you'll get paid the following day, you'll get paid in a week, you'll get paid in 30 days, which is called net 30. If you wait the whole 30 days, if that load is paying 400 bucks, you'll get that whole 400 bucks. Anything underneath, uh, you know, next day pay, they're taking 3%. Uh, 15 day pay, they're taking like a 1.5%, you know? Okay. So there's different ways of getting paid. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I got paid once a month. Um, it sounds like, man, you know what? That's not going to be enough. You know what? If you're smart with your money, first of all, you're getting a nice chunk of money. I, I, you know, you're, you're getting you're getting enough. You're getting more than enough to last you for the month. But you got to be smart with the money. You know, you get that amount of feria, you just can't be like, oh, man, you know what? Ooh, time to go spending. You know, no, you really got to make that money stretch out. You do get paid uh, enough, but uh, one needs to be disciplined if you're going to be getting paid once a month. So I, um, that, is, uh, that is something to think about right there. Rick, does it... Uh, is it worth, I, know, I, was, I was asking you this on your line. Is it worth buying a trailer as well? Can kind of, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's all right. You know, is it necessary? No, because there's so, there's so many brokers, so many companies that work with only power only, which means just your tractor. So, is it necessary? Not really. It's good to have. Believe me, it's good to have, but it's not. It's not really necessary. Like right now, we have. Like I said, we're doing a, a right away. We're doing power only. We're using their trailers, mm. but they have so much freight on a yearly basis that I'm using my trailers as well. You know, so my guys have to go, go, go to right away, pick up an empty. And then go get it loaded and then come back and wait for a trailer to be emptied out from their warehouse. So what I do, I use my own trailers. I tell my guys, go pick up that load. By the time you get there, hopefully there's a right away trailer. We pick up their trailer. We go get it loaded. By the time we come back, our trailer is empty. So we go back and forth, you know? Mm. Okay. So yeah, is it necessary? I, it's not necessary. Yeah, I uh, I always kind of thought that, man, because it's uh, what about twenty percent or so like that, that uh, that you'll get more with your with your own trailer. It, it just it just it just depends on on uh, how you negotiate the load. Yeah, I just always saw it like more of a headache because now there's more. <laughs> you know, more fees and everything like that to, to, to get a trailer. And I'm not even really sure how much more. I know you're going to make more, but I'm just really not sure how much more you're going to make. Um, I always thought just having the tractor was good enough. But, uh, I mean, if you're looking to expand and probably gain a trailer, um, might suit you. But, um, but yeah, I just... You know what, but that. you know what, Cholo? I think, I think the best strategy, bro, I think the best strategy is... Rent a trailer before you buy it. Okay. And see if you like it. See if you can load your, your trailer up. Mm. Or can you find more power-only loads where you don't have to use your own trailer? Mm. I think okay. that's, that's, the, that's the best strategy. Before you buy your own trailer, before you buy your own equipment, lease it out, rent it out for a month or so, and see how you like it. If you don't, then nothing's lost. Right. Right. Vic, what about these lease to own by, uh, by companies um, for their trucks? They got programs and, and, and things of that nature where it's like, hey, you know what? This will be your truck. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, we have that program as well. Okay. I mean, how does I, that work? I, well, what I tell my guys is, you know, you got to be on board with us from six to six months to a year. Mm. And if you still want the truck, then we'll do a contract. So I'll charge them for, uh, for the payment on the truck. However, however, how much the truck is, mm. I would charge them for insurance, uh, parking. If they're using my fuel card, I'll charge them for the fuel card. This dude acts like a freaking kid, I swear to God. Like, he don't know what the hell to do. And I just freaking told him. <sighs> man. <laughs> hey, so you guys want to be like Vic? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, so we charge him for all that. Um, 
What else, muchacho? I give them the benefit of the doubt whether they want me to take out the registration or do they want to pay it at the end of the year, mm -hmm. the road taxes, um, all that. It just depends on how they want to do it. If they want to use their own fuel, fuel card or they want to pay out of pocket, then that's on them, you know? They don't have to use my fuel card. Um, if they want to pay the registration on their own, get hit at the end of the year with a big lump sum, then, you know, that's on them as well. Road tax is the same thing, you know, but so what I give them is a, is a six year contract. So I tell them, look, you can haul with whoever you want to haul for, but you just got to notify me because I have to put them on our insurance so you can haul for them. However much money you make over there, I just need to deduct my deductions from that truck. Okay. That's it. Okay, because okay, why? Because technically, it's still your truck. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's still under the company, but I don't run them lease programs where um, you can't haul for anybody else but me. I I don't run it like that. Right. As long as I know where you're hauling that, and I can insure that person in case anything happens, to me it doesn't bother me. Because okay. there's a lot of lease to own trucks that are out there, but the company is telling them, you can't haul for anybody else but me. Uh -huh. That's the benefit that that company gets. Yeah. Is is it a good program for the most part? I mean, if, if I if, if somebody wants to purchase a truck and, and they're like, ah, you know what, man, I don't really want to go through all those headaches. Is this kind of a simpler way to, to lease to own a truck? It is, it is, and it's also a way of uh, pretty much telling these guys whether they can make it or not. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like renting a trailer. You know, buying the trailer, rent the trailer. My, my lease programs is a walkway program. So if you say at the end of the year, you know what, Victor, I can't do it. You know, I, you know, the, the bills are piling up. I'm not making enough money. I'm going to have to let go of the truck. I'm fine with that, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, so I, this, uh, so I always saw my. Go ahead. No, I, I, I always saw, uh, I don't see it as much anymore, but I used to see a lot of advertisement. Hey, lease to own, lease to own one of our trucks, lease to own one of our trucks. And I never really, I talked to drivers that did it. But I never really got into the nuts and bolts on how that worked, man. So, um, okay. Yeah, well, that's an option there, man. Would you, rec so would you recommend somebody do that? Well, that's, that's the way I started, Cholo. Okay. I started, I, I had a truck. I was a company driver. Mm. Uh, I, I, was in, I was working for an agency at the time. Mm. Uh, I found this company and uh, I drove for this one dude. Uh, the lady inside the office, one time when I came back to the yard to drop off the load, she pulled me in the, in the office and told me, hey, we have a lease to own a uh, program here. And I was like, what is that? So she explained it to me. So, you know, I, I was, you know, I was all Google Gaga, you know, I was going to get my own rig, you know? So I was like, yes, yes, let's do it. So from that one truck, I ended up going back in the office, talking to her, I say maybe a year after and asking her, hey, can I get another truck and lease it on to you guys? And she said, yeah, yeah, we ain't got a problem with it. And I said, cool. So that's the way I grew through a lease on a program. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's definitely an option out there. I never even really thought of that. Uh, like I said, I used to see much more advertisement for that. Uh, not as much anymore, but I, I, I still do uh, see it. So, Vic, uh, just kind of closing it out. So, okay, you know, we talked about credit. Can you get a loan to cover all this stuff that we're talking about? Or is it just the purchase of the truck and everything to get it registered and all those other fees? comes out of your pocket no you can get a loan to cover all you can of get that. that all financed you can finance all that really yes all, all of it every single penny of it oh i didn't know that man i thought it was just for the purchase of the truck no nah, bro no nah, you can purchase 
every single penny of it if your credit is up to par. Okay. Okay. That's, man, that's really good to know. So if you guys are listening, man, work on that credit. Um, unless your but, piggy banks, unless your piggy bank is full. But, you know? but let, let, let me, let, okay, that's one strategy of becoming an owner operator. Let me give you another strategy of becoming an owner operator total. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't do an LLC. Don't do an escort. Go buy you a truck. Go buy you a truck. Before you go buy you a truck, go talk to a company. Ask that company, can I lease on to your company? If they say, yeah, go buy you a truck, lease that truck on with that company. Do that thing for a year. Within that year, you want to open up your LLC or your, or your corporation. While you're leased on to that company, talk to owner operators. Learn the business. Know where to go get your freight. Know who you talk to. I mean, learn the business while you're leased onto this company. Because by the time that year is over, you're just going to kill it because you already know how to run your business. But that's, that's the way I started. It worked for me. We were able to grow. But that's another way of uh, becoming an owner-operator. Now, when you lease a truck to, their, to, to a company, they put their name on it, right? Okay. All right. Yep. So they, they put their name on it, but again, they take care of pretty much everything. They just take it out of your uh, uh, your paycheck, I guess I'll still call it, but they'll take it out of your fund, the money that you made. They take it out of it, but they're the ones that deal with whatever it may be, you know, first hand, and they just take it out of uh, your piggy bank there. Your insurance, your permits, if you want to use their fuel card, they're going to deduct all that from your check. But you are learning the business by being leased onto this company. And I mm -hmm. can't stress this enough. Talk to other owner operators. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, my man. That was... Uh... That was a good one right there to finish off because I didn't even think about that. Go buy a truck and lease it onto a company. Find a company yeah. that uh, that would do that. All right. That's cool, man. That's Rick. Go for it. Go for it, brother. Go for it. That is, that is the easiest way. The easiest way to, to become an owner-operator is buy the truck, lease onto a company, learn the ropes, being leased onto that company. Don't be a robot and just drive and deliver loads. No, you're trying to grow. So speak, open your mouth, talk to owner operators, ask them, where are you getting your loads? What's the best load board? Where can I get my permits? Where can I get my escort? Where can I get my LLC? Do that and you will kill it. Okay. Yeah, because there's really no school for this stuff, man. So you just got to go and start uh, rubbing elbows with the right people and yeah, just learning the business that way. So Vic, you know what? Look, man, um, like company drivers, some just like being company drivers because they don't have to deal with all this stuff. They don't have to deal with all this madness. It's like, hey man, any little problem, the company takes care of it. Truck broke down, whatever, not my problem. Company takes care of it. But Vic, is it worth to you is it worth being an owner operator? Because it is a life changer. It is your company now. Sundays, you gonna be like Vic Med, spending it with your truck, okay? Maybe having a little bit of a headache, man. Uh, and um, do you do you really truly have a day off? I don't have a, a day off. I don't have a day off. Uh, sometimes I'm, I think I'm ADD, you know, but... I love my job, Cholo. I love my job. And, you know, when I was leased out to that company, bro, uh, I was like, man, is this it? You know? Yeah, I, I had two trucks, you know, but it was still like, is this it? The company got into a big old lawsuit and they kicked us all out, bro. They kicked us all out and they kicked us down with some money. When they kicked us out with that money, that was the best thing they could have done for me. I had to go get my own authority. And I've never looked back again, Cholo. That is the 
best thing that ever happened to us is getting our own authority. Yeah, it was it was a it was a little struggle in the beginning, but it was the best, bro. It was, I mean, now I just sit home and and just dispatch, and you know, I gotta I gotta pay, play a psychiatrist, and sometimes I gotta pay play somebody's dad, you know, and you know I gotta be the shoulder to cry on, all that in one, but. It's 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 good, man. It is good. It is good. Cholo, there's nothing wrong with being a company driver. There's not, bro. There's not because we're all built different. We're all built different. There's some guys that can only use their brains and there's some guys that can only use their hands, you know? And there's some truckers that, like you said, they don't want to deal with the paperwork. They don't want to deal with looking for loads. They don't want to deal with, you know, uh, permits and registration and all that you know and there's just some guys that they just want to just be out there and doing it on their own because they think everybody and their mother is after their money so they want to do it on their own so but there's nothing wrong with either or there's not but mm -hmm. i tell people if you really want to make some money you know you got to be a boss right if you you're if you're content where you're at that is fine too. There's nothing wrong with that because you're still doing the same job the rest of us are, you know? Mm -hmm. You are feeding this freaking country. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just say to everybody, uh, you know, when I was an owner operator, man, I was really young. And um, I thought this this what trucking is because I don't like it. Because it's 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 it was just at that time, at that age, I was like, there's a lot of responsibility, man. And I, I don't like it. You know? <laughs> your days off, you're still spending it with your truck, man. It's just, I, I didn't, I didn't like it, man. And then being a company driver, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, that's cool. That's freedom. But um, definitely for, uh, you know, I've been thinking for, for quite a while now. And it's like, man, I, I, I gotta get back, man. But you know, if, for those that are thinking like, hey, I'm a truck driver, I want to make more money, I'm, I'm already driving a truck, there's more to it. So really think about, do you really want to put in that extra effort, that extra work, because um, it's not just about making more money. It's definitely going to consume more of your time and more responsibility, man. So Vic, any last word, brother, before we get out of here? Don't get it wrong. Being an owner operator is a big responsibility. It's not just a little title. I'm an owner operator. It is a big responsibility. It's a big risk. It's a headache. So if you really want to be an owner operator, please do your research because I hate to hear somebody be an owner operator. And then, you know, four or five months from now, they're just, I'm going to file bankruptcy. So just think about it. Uh, do your research before you jump into it because it's a career changing thing. It's a big responsibility and it's nothing to play with because this is an 18 wheeler that you're getting into. Thanks for having me on again, Cholo. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, drive safe, man. And familia, if you're wondering, Vic ain't going nowhere. Oh, we're bringing him back, man. We're bringing them back. We're, we're, we're sinking our teeth into this vato, man. So we're, we're bringing them back, but we'll end it right there, man. We'll come back and talk some more trucking with one Mr. Big Med. But for now, familia, live your life like you're on the road. Be aware of your surroundings and always keep it safe. This is blood makes you related, but loyalty makes you family. Till next time, this is Ed the Total Trucker for one Mr. Big Med. Over and out.